What's going on, buddy, and welcome back to Tech Cubed. And today we are going to be installing Mac OS 10.6 Snow Leopard in a VirtualBox virtual machine. Now, I usually wouldn't do a tutorial like this because there are a lot of tutorials on the internet about kind of this topic. But I was a couple months ago trying to figure out how to get Mac OS Snow Leopard in a virtual machine. And there were some tutorials. Unfortunately, all of those were out of date or they didn't work anymore. Um, like one of the main ones was to use, I think it was a hazard ISO, um, or was by hazard. I could never get that to work. I tried for a long time. I couldn't get that to work. Um, cause I wanted to get Snow Leopard going kind of as like, I guess, a uh, retro thing, I guess. And so I could run some older software. Unfortunately, um, I couldn't. So I spent some time researching this and found out the best way to get, uh, Mac OS 10 6 Snow Leopard in a virtual machine and that is what we are going to be going over today so you are going to need three things to get this virtual machine going uh, the first of which being as you can imagine we need VirtualBox this is what we'll be installing the virtual machine in that's kind of self-explanatory we'll move this over here for now uh, the second thing we'll be needing is if I drag this over here what we need from here is this Snow Leopard install ISO now this I will leave a link to in the description below. Um, this one isn't modified at all. This is um, an official Apple one, um, but it was converted into a ISO because usually these come in the form of DMGs. But this was converted into an ISO, and you and I'll leave a link to it in the description below so you can download this. All of those links will be in the description below, so you, um, you don't have to go searching for anything on the internet by yourself. So uh, VirtualBox and the ISO, the, those are the first two things you need. And then the third one is I have it right here. It is the iBoot ISO. I'll also leave a link to that in the description because usually, and I'll explain what this is for because usually you wouldn't be able to boot into a Mac OS Snow Leopard ISO without um, kind of special software um, or, well, you need like a Mac, you know, of course, to boot into the, uh, the Apple DMGs. But this will let us, because even though you wouldn't be able to usually boot into the ISOs either, but this will let us. This will let us here. So we have the thing that we'll be installing the virtual machine in and then the ISO we need for the virtual machine, and then what we need to boot into the ISO. So those are all three things we will need. Um, so I will come over here now, um, get this out of the way, and then I will come over here now, and we can start to get our virtual machine going. I will click New. Um, I will adjust my um, location here. I'll put it on my secondary drive because I have a solid state drive and hard drive. I'm not going to be selling this on my hard drive. Um, we will, well, I guess we'll name it first. We'll call it Mac. Uh, oh, I have caps lock on. That's unfortunate. Uh, I will call it Mac OS Snow. Uh, no, that's not how you spell it. Um, uh, Leopard. Wait, is Leopard two words? Yeah, I think it's two words. Okay. Uh, wait, that's not how you spell Leopard. All right. Uh man, I kind of messed that up there. All right, there we go. Uh, wait, was that it right there? Uh, all right, yes, do 64-bit. Um, because this is because this will work on Intel and AMD systems. I probably should have said that in the beginning. Um, but yeah, if you look this up, in a lot of ways they'll tell you is to install it on your main machine and that you need an Intel processor. No, when you're selling a virtual machine, you do not need a specifically an Intel processor. You can install it on Intel and AMD. Um, yeah, so call it, uh, call it whatever you want, to be honest. Um, well, I guess I'll throw in an X here because it was Mac OS X Snow Leopard. Um, and then, uh, change that to that. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't think this matters too much. Changing it to Mac OS 64-bit or Mac OS 10.6 Snow Leopard 64-bit. I don't think it matters that much. I'll just kind of change it because we are going to be installing Snow Leopard. Um, for my RAM, um, we are going to be, let's see, I'm going to move it up and give this machine, eight gigs of RAM. That's way more than you need to, especially since MacBooks that were sold around the time Snow Leopard was like a big, um, well, Apple's mainstream operating system, which was 2009, 2010-ish. Um, the main computers only sold with four gigs of RAM. That was the Unibody MacBook Pro, um, the Unibody Polycarbonate MacBook, and the MacBook Air, the early variations of it. Um, those all came stock with four gigs of RAM. Uh, well, I think the MacBook Air actually came with two. Uh, but you could upgrade like the MacBook Pro to eight gigs um, so, uh, from Apple's website uh, if you if you didn't want to do it yourself. Uh, but anyway, eight gigs that's a little bit excessive. You can put four gigs and easily get away with this. Um, I have a lot of RAM on my machine, so we will just stick with eight gigs 
Um, I will create a virtual hard disk now. Um, I have uh, expert mode on, keep in mind. See, there's this little, uh, uh, what's this button right here? You can click and you can switch between expert and guided mode. I have expert mode on. So if that's why it looks a little bit different, that's why. Uh, I should probably said that earlier. Um, but I got kind of used to it because I like it on the expert mode. Uh, but anyway, uh, do VDI, which is VirtualBox Disk Image. Uh, you can uh, dynamically allocate, which is what I'm going to do. Um, storage, you probably could get away using 20 gigs, I think. Um, I wouldn't recommend it, though, because if, if it will let you, I'm not completely sure, but if it will let you, you won't have any storage for kind of the older applications and stuff, um, especially if you're going to get, like, the App Store on here. Um, but So I will give it 64 gigs, which is a good amount of storage. Um, that'll be way more than enough, um, I believe, especially if you're going to be installing special software. Uh, 64, well, I guess 32 gigs would kind of be perfect if you're kind of installing it and stuff, but 64 is more recommended if you are going to be installing a lot of retro software and using this, um, kind of, well, more than just kind of virtual machine to turn on when you want to, well, when you want to have fun and you're bored. Um, so yes, uh, you only probably need 32 gigs, but I'm going to go with 64 because I have a large secondary hard drive. Um, I will click create, and then you will have this little uh, Mac OS X Snow Leopard pop up here. Don't start it yet, because we need to change some settings first. The first thing you want to do is you want to come in here. Uh, general, we don't need to switch anything in there. That's how you change like the name and um, certain little bits like that. Um, this encryption, I haven't used this encryption yet. I might uh, in the future, though. Uh, so come down to system um, right here, and then you want to uncheck floppy, and then you want to bring it down here because uh, we don't need the floppy. Um, and then enable EFI, no, do not enable U EFI. Um, and then come down to display. Um, I recommend, you don't need to do this, but I highly recommend putting this up to 128 megs of video memory. Um, again, you don't have to do that, but I highly, highly recommend it. Um, and as well as this right here, uh, you don't need to change any of this error stuff, only change things I'm changing, which so far is um, the floppy, the EFI, and this video memory. Again, the video memory, you don't have to do it. I highly recommend it. Um, and now to arguably the most important part, um, even though it won't work in general if you don't have uh, this going. Um, but come down here. Uh, d download that iBoot ISO that I put in the link description below. Um, it might be in your downloads folder. I organize these um, into kind of sec separate ISOs and stuff like that so I keep them organized. But um, there should be a little bit of folder once you download it. So open it up and you'll have iBoot ISO. So insert that here. Don't insert the Mac OS Snow Leopard ISO. We will get to that later. So click OK. And then our virtual machine is ready to start. So give it a sec. Um, depending on, I guess, your machine and stuff, it might take a bit. Um, oh, yeah, this happens occasionally. Uh, I don't know about this. Um, yeah, just... Uh, just I, I don't know, this happens I, sometimes. If this happens to you, uh, just go back and start with the iBoot ISO right here. Um, it keeps making noises, I'm trying to close this message out here. You don't really need to pay attention to the messages, because um, I know what I'm doing. <laughs> um, but anyway, come down here, wait, I don't capture it yet. Um, come down here to devices, go to optical drives, and it got into the iBoot. So ne next what you're going to want to do is choose a disk file. You're going to want to go back to the ISOs and insert the Snow Leopard install ISO earlier. And once you click that, um, if you go here, you'll see that we have Snow Leopard ISO. So capture this and then press F5. And now that will change from iBoot to Mac OS X install DVD. And if you got this far, um, and if, then that means everything works correctly and it's ready to install. So click enter and then it will proceed to boot into the ISO, because you wouldn't usually be able to do that. Do that. Um, if you try to just boot into the ISO, um, like if when we're in the settings, if you switch out the iBoot for the Snow Leopard ISO, it wouldn't boot, because you need the iBoot ISO. It's necessary, 100%. Um, uh, now you come down here, uh, you can use whatever language you feel like. Um, you can use a bunch, of, there's a bunch of these in here. Um, like I think that's Korean, I think that is uh, Mandarin Chinese. Um, I could be wrong though. Um, I, I know for a fact this is Russian. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna use English for the main language. Um, so we're gonna go to next to preparing installation. Okay, and then to set up the installation of Mac OS Snow Leopard, click continue. I am going to continue. Um, agree, you can read this if you want. I don't. I don't. 
but if you want to, you can. Okay, next, if you come down here, this is where a lot of people get confused, because uh, select a dictionary disk where you want to install Mac OS X, uh, there's nothing here, because what we need to do is we need to come down to Utilities, and then click Disk Utility. The disk is still there, don't give up yet. And then come down here, as, as you can see right here, it's here. So then come down here and click Erase. Um, name, I am going to call it Macintosh HD, um, Macintosh HD, because that's what a lot of them were called. Um, then we're going to click Erase, um, and then it will do that. And then it is successfully erased right here, so now you see a Macintosh HD. If we close this out right here, we can install it here now when we click Install. Um, now one thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to come into Customize. You don't have to do this. You can click Install and kind of skip this a little bit right here. But this is something I kind of like to check out uh, because I want to install QuickTime 7 and Rosetta, which emulates PowerPC-based applications. Because um, right here, because I haven't found a proper way to install PowerPC uh, Mac OS X variations, kind of like, um, I think it was, was it Mac OS Panther and before were only PowerPC. Um, I haven't found out a proper way to install a PowerPC only version of Mac OS. I will in the future, don't doubt me. Um, I will come at you guys with um, a tutorial on that eventually, but I can't find a way right now. Um, I will do it soon though. So yeah, until then, um, if you want to emulate PowerPC, make sure Rosetta's checked. Um, you can get rid of some of their stuff, like I don't need this printer stuff. Um, this digital fonts, why not? Uh, language, translations, I don't need that. Um, so then you can click OK. Yeah, you don't have to do this. You can just come down here. You don't didn't have to go in there. Click Install. Um, yeah, so eventually I will come at you guys with a um, tutorial on how to install like Mac OS Panther or something, because I haven't found anyone that knows how to do that. Maybe there is. Um, but I haven't found anything on installing that. I think because everybody's in, uh, focused on installing Big Sur and stuff, which are the latest versions, um, and that, and um, some of the other um, latest versions of Mac OS. Um, but anyway, um, it will take some time depending on, I, I guess, your hardware. Um, for me, it says 20 minutes. Um, usually it doesn't take that long, so for me, it probably, yeah, I see it jump down a little bit. So for me, it'll probably take around 15-ish uh, minutes. Um, but yeah, it'll take a while, and I will be back when it finishes. Okay, everybody, so the installation just finished, and it says, Mac OS X was installed on your Macintosh HD disk. Uh, your computer must restart to complete the installation. Now, it says, the computer will restart in 30 seconds. Click restart to restart your computer now. Now, we don't want to do that, so what you're going to do is you're going to do right control or whatever it is to um, uncapture, and then you are going to, no, and it <laughs> keeps doing that. Um, yes, you'll get this right here, this little message. Um, so click up here to close the virtual machine and click power off. You'll get this message, it's completely normal. Nothing went wrong. Um, now come back here to settings, click storage, um, right here, and then, oh wait, not this one, this one right here. Um, and then right here, choose a disk file and go back to that iBoot ISO and click OK. Make sure when you're, make sure when you're in here, you got this little disk right here and not the little hard drive. Because if the little disk right here is the one that you need to put the iBoot in the Mac OS Snow Leopard installation uh, ISOs in. Um, so click OK. And then once you have the iBoot in there, you can click Start. And then um, it'll start up in just a few short seconds right here. And then right here, um, it kind of didn't do that right. Uh, let me see if I can get this properly um, right here. Okay, I got that part properly. Let's see if I can get this part properly. Um, you don't have to do this. Uh, this is just me uh, trying to make everything be perfect. Um, now, once you get in here, you'll see the iBoot like, like we did before, but then if you go over here, you'll see Macintosh HD. Use the arrow keys to move between them. Highlight the Macintosh HD one, or go to the Macintosh HD one, make sure it's highlighted. Oh, or whatever you name the disk, because you can name the disk whatever you want. I just call it a Macintosh HD because it's elegant and simple. Uh, and then click enter, and then it will boot into kind of a fresh installation copy if you did buy an actual Mac in 2009 version of, uh, you know, Mac OS Snow Leopard. So it'll take a second there because it has to go from a fresh boot. Now I just want to mention while we're waiting for this to boot up, because it takes a while depending on, um, I, I, I guess you're, um, like if you installed on an SSD or an HDD, um, but this is my favorite kind of um, 
hack to get macOS on a sort of Windows machine um, because it just works well and you don't have to use any like weird ISOs or anything like that. Um, now you'll hear the little macOS um, installation music in the background. The only part about this I don't like is the fact that there's the macOS X um, video isn't there. And that's the only part about this I don't like. Um, but you still get the music. Um, so yeah, just kind of go through here, clicking around and such. Um, what you want. So yeah, US, US. Uh, don't transfer any information now. Um, enter your Apple ID. No. Um, registration information. Uh, I have no interest to do any registration stuff. I don't even think it works anymore. Um, so I will just go for the channel name right here. Um, yeah, tech cube, tech cube, password. We don't need any of that. So I will just continue. Um, okay. Yeah, I am completely sure. Um, so then you go through here and talking with Apple. Yeah, no. Um, so yes, uh, you can change this to whatever you want. Um, I will just leave the, um, time zone as it is. So I will click continue, and then thank you, your Mac is set up and ready to go, so you can back up your computer, browse your files with Coverflow, um, or Coverflow, not Coverflow, um, Coverflow, um, email with style, chat using effects and backdrops, organize your work, enjoy using Apple Computer and Mac OS X. Go! And then you will be greeted with, um, the Mac OS, uh, X 10.6 Snow Leopard, uh, thing right here. Oh, okay, yes, you'll get this, probably. Um, when you finish setting up right here. I kind of forgot about this. Um, it's not a big deal at all. So you just kind of click continue. Um, so um, press the see, so, you know, press the key immediately to the right of the shift key on the left side keyboard. That can't be identified. So I'll do that. And then the right shift key um, right here. So I click done. That's just kind of a little setup process that kind of tells um, the Mac what kind of computer, or not kind of computer you got, but what kind of keyboard you got. Um, so yeah, you can go in here now, and you can kind of look through the little files and such. Um, if I remember properly, um, you can find the little intro video in here still. In fact, I think it was Core Services. Um, let me try and find it right here. Uh, I'm going to see. Yeah, you're basically done at this point. I just kind of want to check in here for the little uh, Mac OS um, intro video. Uh, I remember it was in here. I think it was this one right here. Um, and resources, and there you go. So you got the little intro sound and the little intro video. Um, so you can go and get, um, like the, so when you get like the app store, you can go and, um, kind of get like iMovie, um, or you can get the iLife, um, DMG and the iWork DMG free off the internet. Um, and then you can insert that in the devices tab and then you can install it like an actual, uh, CD like you would usually do on a real Mac. Um, which is pretty cool. Um, but yeah, this is like the intro and neutral video. This isn't necessary. This isn't part of the tutorial at all. That's just me kind of wanting to check out the little intro video that I really like from this version of Mac OS. Um, but yeah, everything is here. Uh, don't click the about this Mac. Well, you can. It just, it just doesn't do what you think it would. <laughs> it does that, to put it simply. It, it, oh, it brought up all these windows. Yeah, because it's not an actual Mac, so about this Mac doesn't really work. Um, but yeah, you can do like the about finder stuff and you get basically, you know, everything else like that. But it really can't do like the about this Mac because it has like the system information, you know, like about the CPU, which um, since this is the Snow Leopard era, you'd probably have like Core 2 duos. In fact, those were very popular, um, I guess, in the late 2000s and especially on Macs after they moved away from PowerPC. Um, and of course, speaking of which, uh, PowerPC version Mac OS tutorial coming soon, I promise. Um, and I plan to do more of these virtual machine tutorials because I really enjoy doing it, doing them. Um, it may be in the future I'll do that disk encryption thing. Um, I didn't do it in this video though because, um, a lot of these versions, in fact, a lot of operating systems have disk encryption. So having the virtual box disk encryption just doesn't work well in my opinion. Um, you can do it if you want to. Um, I've, I, I think I've done it a couple times before. I think I said earlier that I did it, but I think I've done it a couple times before. Uh, but there's really no need to do it, to be honest. It's kind of a cool, unnecessary feature. But I really like VirtualBox and stuff like that. All those unnecessary features, even though I don't need them, I like to have them here. Uh, but yeah, everything kind of works. You can get Safari going, and it'll kind of bring you to the Apple website. Because uh, the internet works out of the box, which is pretty cool. Um, because if you remember when we checked out um, Red Star OS, the internet did not work out of the box. So it was pretty cool that um, it does work here. 
Um, so yeah, you can, so it takes a long time for this to load because it's not built for Snow Leopard. But yes, internet works out of the box. So you can do that if you wanted to. Again, I wouldn't really recommend it, but you can. Um, so that kind of wraps up this tutorial today. Um, so yeah, this is kind of a, uh, a little tutorial on how to do that. You can get all your like Power PC application out here because we have Rosetta. Um, but yeah, I really hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Um, I will do some different tutorials in the future on different virtual machines like Windows 95. Um, that's something I plan to do in the future, maybe in the next couple months. Um, because there's a lot of cool virtual machines that not a lot of people know how to set up that I really want to dive into and explore, I guess. Um, but yeah, I will see you all in the next video. Thank you for watching. Tech Cubed, over and out.